Hello guys, this is Linus, Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. Welcome to another review of SDR Minion QRP transceiver made by the QRP company in Ukraine. In one of my previous review, and link is in the description, uh, I've been uh, finding out that this is a little nice uh, transceiver with exceptionally good receiver and surprisingly good small but yet uh, fully functional uh, color display with spectrum scope and waterfall. Uh, today I'm gonna investigate how does this QRP radio works on CW because these two things QRP and CW very often if not always go together. If you are an avid QRP and CW operator and you only got 20 seconds to watch this video here is my judgment. If you really want to work good CW, this radio is not for you. Because it's got some strange software defined flaws in the CW work. All right, but if you like me, despite all the obvious software problems with the built-in keyer in this little transceiver, you still like it for its design, you like it uh, for a uh, small spectrum scope, uh, you like it for a solid 5 to 7 watts output, then, and you can spend some few more minutes, then I think I found a walkaround on how to make this little transceiver be useful on CW2, at least for casual, everyday, not contest style, but still CW work. Stay around. This is a CW pedal made by American Morse Company, all aluminum, dual lever, iambic operation suitable, pretty compact, not terribly precise, but still serving me very well while on the go with my Elecraft KX2. Let's take a look. So we see that the internal keyer and the software in the Elecraft KX2 easily recognizes the key pedal and creates normal, nice, clean CW output. So knowing that my little key pedal is okay and working and nothing wrong with it, I thought I will use this little key pedal with this SDR Minion transceiver and I thought it's going to be a good travel package. So that's what I thought. I've chosen in the menu, I've chosen the Yambic here. It's only two options in the menu. One is for the Yambic, which means electronic keyer in this case, or straight. You can connect the straight key and have it just manipulating with the external memory keyer or just with the straight keyer. So I've connected this American Morse dual lever pedal to this QRP transceiver and I thought I can go. Connected the uh, dummy load, of course. I thought I can go. Well, and it's nothing I can change and, I, and nothing I can do about it. I would say the uh, paddle is wrong, something wrong with it. Uh, maybe broken or what, but it just worked fine with Elecraft KX2. It means that the uh, algorithm, which is pre-programmed into SDR Minion, doesn't cope well with the movement and the times of release of the of the um, levers. That's that's my idea. No schematics from this company, and they not, and they are not communicating uh, with the customer, so we can just guess. I cannot call simple CQ. Total gibberish. I've tried to change this CW pedal into the other. Maybe another gonna be better. All right, so I took my Begali Traveler. If you know what Begali is, there's no need to explain what it is and what kind of pedal is it. If you don't, 
the galley paddles are the most mechanically precise key paddles on the market with the absolutely precise timing of release of levers with the magnetic springs and all all the other bearings and all the other mysterious things which mr begale in italy puts into this into his paddles to make them wonderfully mechanically top class so let's try begale yes So that's a discovery. The SDR Minion doesn't like simple pedals like this, but it takes somehow the most top class key pedals like the Kali. <laughs> so I think it's related not with the brand or with the preferences of the guys in Ukraine who produces this transceiver. But I think it's, um, it's uh, something linked again with the algorithm in the software of the SDR Minion, which when the paddle is extremely precise, then it somehow fits into the algorithm. If it's at least a little bit not precise, like this one, portable small paddle, then we have gibberish. One more thing I discovered was that when I use the single lever CW paddle or unilever paddle, uh, so it, the SDR Minion also takes it and it works quite okay. This single lever paddle is homemade by my friend, that's why I like it very much, um, but it's not any kind of uh, terribly precise, mechanically precise. It's precise, it's nice, but it's homemade and it's single lever. You have to be careful, but still it's possible and it works. And I think it's related with the fact that there is no two, two separate levers which are somehow interact with each other when you squeeze it, especially in the yambic mode, when you squeeze it, when you release it, then the release times probably doesn't fit into the algorithm of this internal software of the SDR Minion. So that's why, uh, that's why uh, the other types, uh, either very precise like Bigali yambic pedals work or uh, single lever pedals work and external keyers also work. Let's just see the last experiment. So to connect the straight key or external memory keyer, we need to go to the menu and change from mode from the uh, Yambic to straight. As an external memory keyer in the role of the straight key, I'm gonna connect my favorite Tyrian wary good old Pico Keyer PK3 made from a kit with my own homemade dual lever CW paddle made of paper clip. I will do another video on that. And now this Pico Keyer is gonna serve as a straight key for the SDR Minion. Let's switch it on and see. So various speeds from high speed to low to middle speed. The external memory keyer in the role of just straight key works best to, to my personal opinion uh, because in this way you just bypass all the firmware possible flaws and, and, and problems in this QRP transceiver 
and um, it's possible then to, 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 to manipulate and to create CW in more or less normal way. Uh, then I would choose the single lever pedal, which is the simplest and doesn't have all these uh, dual lever yambic, uh, yambic strange phenomena with this um, transceiver. Of course, if you got Begali and you like it and, uh, and uh, you work with it, so uh, I would choose, I would choose <laughs> Begali probably too. I, I choose it every time I go with my other field gear. Uh, so that's, that's for the problem uh, number one. I can't say we solved or fixed a problem number one with this shoddy CW phenomena in the SDR Minion transceiver. But I think we found a kind of a work around uh, allowing to work uh, more or less normally uh, in the CW mode. So, but this is not uh, the only problem with the CW in SDR Minion. Stay around to learn more. Yes. Another unpleasant problem with the CW regime of this transceiver is that when you switch from transmit in the CW mode to receive, the transceiver hangs or freezes in some strange condition when it doesn't transmit anymore, but it still not receives yet. Let's take a look at how it happens. All right, and then it came back to receive after some five seconds of silence. This is pretty annoying because you're simply losing a CW QSO in the middle of it when you do it on uh, almost every second over. So that's a big problem, but I think I found a walkaround about that. The walkaround I think I found is pretty simple. When you are in the CW menu number 11, and you go to the TX delay, the, the whole you need to do is to change the value which is here. It comes from the factory at 300 milliseconds. Empirically, after experimenting, I found out that changing this value no less than 500, I keep it at around 520, 530 milliseconds, um, the problem is actually is gone. Not completely, it still happens, but pretty rarely. While conducting my experiments, uh, I was trying uh, to send and receive CW uh, 24 times in each regime. So, at the TX delay setting at 300 milliseconds, that, that what comes from the factory, uh, the result was like, 11 times out of 24 attempts the freezing effect took place. It means almost every second time the freezing takes place. This, is make, this makes work actually impossible uh, with the with the here. Uh, at the TX delay setting at, setting at 500 milliseconds or 520 milliseconds rather, uh, both at the, with the Yambi keyer and the straight external keyer, uh, the freezing effect went down to one time out of 24 attempts. So it means it basically doesn't repeat so annoyingly. And in this regime, my conclusion would be that the SDR Minion transceiver could work in CW, more or less be usable if you set the TX delay at 520, 530 milliseconds, you use straight paddle, or which means, in my case, uh, external memory here, and then uh, uh, we can make some QSOs.
uh, best of all, of course, if uh, the guys who produces this transceiver, one Yuri and another Yuri who's responsible for the firmware, they would simply answer to our letters or they would simply make, uh, make made publicly uh, their suggestions how, how to solve uh, these problems in, in the, so to say, a real way, not finding the workaround, allowing transceiver to work somehow, more or less usable, but uh, to solve the problem uh, in the reality. So guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you consider subscribing, thank you very much. And till the next time, this is Linus Limoyanki to Hotel 73.